What pops up in your mind when you think about Jerusalem? Religions? Holiness? Or maybe historical tension? What pops up in your mind when you think about teenagers? Rebels? Parties? Or days of exams, perhaps? Our world is flooded with prejudices. You are told to think out of the box, but at the same time, it means that you have already had a box inside your mind. Now, let's think beyond any black boxes that might exist in your mind, because today, we will discover Jerusalem's startup ecosystem in the eyes of a teenager. We are a group of five curious students from Eastern Mediterranean International School who believe that Jerusalem is more than a holy place. It is growing impressively in terms of entrepreneurship. To get a better insight into what exactly is going on here, we had a talk with these aspiring Jerusalem-based entrepreneurs. So, uh, I am a uh, startup entrepreneur. I'm Avishai. I'm 28. I'm a husband and a father. Oh, my name is Yoda. I'm 16. I live in Jerusalem. Um, and a, uh, an active member of the ecosystem here in Jerusalem for startups. Um, working with 200 apps, which is an app development company that helps build uh, cool products for, um, for startups, for companies. Um, and uh, really, um, we love to contribute and help and work with other entrepreneurs and startups. T-Line is a very um, cool startup <laughs> that I just founded together with uh, Ben Wiener, my uh, co-founder and investor, and together with uh, Amitai Molko, uh, my CTO. And uh, it's a platform for brands and publishers to tell their story better on top of timelines. So basically T-Line helps publishers and uh, brands to embed a timeline inside their website to give their users more context of the story that they are now reading. I run a marketing business, a marketing firm called Tuanos, where we do online marketing, online strategy, web design and graphic design for organizations, small businesses and startups who uh, don't want to break their bank by working with uh, big firms who charge very high prices but yet still want to effectively market their business. It's funny, I think first of all it's because I live here. I, I, I live here and I love this city and uh, my uh, wife's parents are here also and that's helpful when you try to do a startup together with raising children. Firstly, I live in Jerusalem um, and um, I believe that uh, our company specifically, 200 Apps, is a company that um, is a very uh, Jerusalem-focused uh, company. And one of the reasons that we focus on, on Jerusalem is because um, most of us are, are Jerusalem um, are Jerusalemites. Running a business in Jerusalem is, uh, is amazing. Uh, the, the Jerusalem community that's, that's grown over the past five years and has become a, re a really supportive community is amazing. Um, when you need help, there's always people around to ask, and, uh, and it's really just a great uh, environment to build a business in and to make connections and to work with people to achieve success both for yourself and for others. I think that we uh, differentiate ourselves in that we bring um, a much more uh, closely connected development company to uh, to for startups. Uh, startups are often looking for a technical co-founder or a, um, um, a CTO, uh, somebody that's going to not just uh, code or develop or build something. Uh, we actually um, uh, we actually come with uh, ideas. We come with um, uh, a certain level of understanding and innovation. We bring very very top 
level development and top designers to startups. And specifically because the ecosystem here uh, is relatively new, there's new companies coming around all the time uh, that are coming and, and working with us. And not to mention, we've actually attracted uh, companies in Tel Aviv, companies uh, in Israel and uh, abroad in the United States, uh, who are all working with us because um, we, we offer a, a, a much more close-knit level of service as opposed to just you know, uh, bringing in developers and, 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 and following instructions, we, we really add a lot of value to, to, to the companies. I think oh, that's a great question. Uh, T-Line, uh, it was a big surprise for all of us because we launched on Product Hunt three months ago, something like that, and we won at the same day with uh, almost 900 upvotes. And it was crazy because no PR, no... Uh, um, we didn't send like uh, people come and upvote for us people love the product because people want probably something cool to interact with based on real content so day after that we uh, got into the next web competition in new york to present a startup for publishers over there so it's a crazy journey for this very uh, uh, young startup and i believe that it's like uh, zuckerberg says uh, move fast and break things. In, in T-Line, this is what we are doing every day and we are trying harder. So I founded a company on uh, 20... On, uh, it was four, five years ago, something like that. Um, and I failed. I fucked up. Discovery, client, uh, customer development, um, understanding of markets, um, understanding your product. Uh, knowing where you want to go, and what you want to build, and, 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 and how you want to promote it. And obviously I think that an entrepreneurial journey uh, involves, you know, so many different factors uh, and trying to filter down, uh, you know, and avoid, uh, you know, filter out the noise and, and really focus on, on hitting, uh, hitting your mark and knowing your customer. As, a, as someone who's young and who's just starting up, I've definitely experienced a lot of fears and failures. Um, I would say one failure or something that didn't pan out the way I planned it was uh, a few years ago I had an idea for a startup or for an app that I was going to build. I started looking for money. Uh, after, a few, after working on it a little bit and a few months of designing it and working on it and trying to get some money for it, it, kind of, it turned out and I understood that it wasn't going to work out and that it wasn't as great of an idea as I thought. The startup ecosystem is not all about startups. Accelerators are also important players in this game. According to Harvard Business Review, startup accelerators are those who support early stage companies through education, mentorship, and financing. Let's meet Tom Barav, Director of Marketing and Ecosystems at Mass Challenge. Mass Challenge is the um, most startup friendly accelerator on the planet. It's friendly because, first, we are giving a four month program uh, in Jerusalem. Um, including mentorship, partners, connections to everything that uh, an early startup uh, needs in order to grow fast and succeed. Uh, we also a non profit organization by connecting them to opportunities, by connecting them to, the, to global markets like uh, uh, like the states, in Europe, and uh, other places around the globe. And everyone here actually wants to help each other, which is amazing. Uh, like 500 startups here um, that are working really, really hard, and especially in fields like you know, future mobility and uh, visual technologies. You have mobile here, you have multinationals like Intel and other you know, great companies, and they're all here in Jerusalem. You also have the Hebrew University, which is one of the best uh, universities in the country. If Mass Challenge is the friendliest accelerator on the planet, Fresh Dot Fund stands out as the first student-run venture fund in Israel. My name is Nitzan Adler. I am one of the managers at Siftec. We open a new project at some mm -hmm. point called Fresh Fund. And Fresh Fund is a venture capital fund that does investments. Um, so it's basically a project that we did a uh, joint venture between Siftec, the accelerator, and a, a a actual venture, a private venture capital fund that is uh, joining us for this project. 
Siftek is all about Jerusalem. I mean, Siftek was founded uh, five years ago in order to, to catalyze the startup community. This whole base is in Jerusalem. Their whole essence of, of Siftek is Jerusalem. So um, I think uh, the decision of, of starting it in Jerusalem is also strategic because uh, it's, it's uh, created by very proud Jerusalem-based um, uh, people, myself and my partners, we, we all grew up around Jerusalem and, and uh, there's a very strong community that cares a lot about, uh, about uh, strengthening the, the young economy in, mm. in Jerusalem. Why would you let students run your fund? Why would you trust them with, with your money? So far, we're happy with the decision. We got about 100 applications when we were doing this, the, the screening process for this student team that we have now, and uh, we ended up accepting 16. Mm -hmm. So, um, and all the, a lot of, like, all the applications were amazing people, um, uh, business uh, school, computer science, students from all different subjects, and there were, it was really inspiring to to talk to all of them and these 16 are like the cream de la cream how every element of jerusalem's startup ecosystem can be connected closely to each other you ask how they can create a friendly environment where everyone is willing to help one another hmm. to answer this question we came to meet rachel wagner rosenweek of made in jerusalem organization so my name is Rachel, I work in a non-profit organisation called Made in JLM or Made in Jerusalem. We are basically an organisation that helps the Jerusalem tech ecosystem to be empowered, strengthened and to connect um, the dots between the different platforms in Jerusalem. Um, we have a few different platforms ourselves, we have a jobs board, we collect data, we work closely with the government to collect data on how many startups there are, how many investments there are, etc. We also run events. Um, we have a monthly happy hour for the whole of the tech community in Jerusalem and um, it's great, every month we have a different theme, this um, month it's actually on investors and we're having all the Jerusalem based investors come and pitch what they do. One of our main aims is to rebrand Jerusalem so that it's not just known as a city of political tension and history but that it's also known as a city of the future and innovation and um, startups and tech. Um, I think one of the main things that's so great about not just Made in Jerusalem but the Jerusalem tech ecosystem is that it's really not, not competitive, everyone really wants to help everyone to succeed and it's a very very close community. We have a WhatsApp group with over 150 community leaders on it from some of the most successful um, company representatives to some of the most successful investors to some new startup founders and basically on this WhatsApp group everyone helps everyone with, with, with whatever they need and I think that just reflects the special source that we have in Jerusalem and um, this feeling of community and friendliness which I don't think you'll see anywhere else in any other city. Supportive and unique. Strong and growing. Warm, it's like a family. It's hungry. And the second one is friendly. Um, I think that that um, makes our uh, situation unique. Not to mention it's, a, it's, it's an ancient city, uh, it's a holy city, um, it's uh, a place where a lot of transformation has occurred over the last uh, 3,000, 4,000 years. And the, uniqueness of the people in the city um, really make it stand out. I'm saying family because it's very, very like everyone knows each other and uh, feels comfortable with each other. I like I think uh, in Tel Aviv I feel it's more um, distant because there are so many. We are hungry for success, we're hungry to make Jerusalem known internationally as a tech city. Friendly, because I would say passionate, but I think that comes in hungry. Like I said, you know, everyone is so friendly to one another. We have a great community. And I think it's something that really helps um, start to succeed in. Um, I would advise um, to uh, what I said before, which is to listen to to uh, there's there's a concept of the lean startup methodology, okay, which is uh, is build, measure, book? learn. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's a it's a famous book, and it's a, and it's it's a it's a methodology for for developing a product uh, fast yeah. and and failing and learning from your experience and and internalizing the lessons that you've learned and and 
and coming out stronger on the other side, as opposed to, uh, I failed, oh my god, I gotta go cry and, 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 uh, uh, and be miserable because I failed. Um, failure is a, is, a, is a natural process and it's, and it's important for somebody to fail and for them to grow from it and to, and to, uh, and to take the lessons and, and be successful uh, on the next round. It's a roller coaster. you have to know that, okay? It's hard. It's very, very hard. If you have it in you, do it. And um, I would say even something else. If you have it in you, you have to do it because you can't do something else if you are an entrepreneur. So uh, my advice is to read a lot. Read a lot actually. Do likes on your Facebook, on your Twitter account for every major uh, publisher and uh, entrepreneur uh, all over the world. And um, try to read, I don't know, research, CV insights, read as much as you can because this is how you can uh, learn, learn what is entrepreneurship. This is the first step. Second step, try, try, open something, develop something launch some product just try be there be out there learn how, what is to launch a product what is to uh, maintain your service whatever you have to try in order to success build your brand build your name and i think the most important advice is choose your founders because those guys will be around you 24 hours and you have to bring the best people and the nice people into your company. My, the one piece of advice I can give to young entrepreneurs is be bold and take risks because be you don't have so much to lose. You don't have rent, you don't have the house, you don't have children, you don't have anyone to support, you don't usually have to pay your own bills. So take chances and take risks and either something will come of it or you've gained some good experience and that can help, that can uh, benefit you next time. If you're trying to build um, an entrepreneurial environment in a city or in a community, I think like I said, the first thing is to make sure that you support one another and you're not necessarily in competition. And if you are in competition, it should be a success, uh, uh, a healthy competition because the main thing is that you need when you have a startup is advice, mentorship and, um, you know, help. And I think that comes with having um, a great environment where everyone is friendly to one another and helpful. Um, I think it's going to continue to grow. Um, uh, there's a lot of investment uh, uh, directed towards companies here. Um, there are amazing entrepreneurs in Jerusalem and uh, uh, just amazing personalities. Just. Um, a lot of fun and I think over the next 10 years uh, we're going to see a lot more growth, a lot more companies, um, uh, a lot more innovation um, being implemented in the city itself. Um, uh, I know that there's talk of, uh, of uh, working with uh, some of the companies like Mobileye um, and, uh, and uh, um, some of the car manufacturers to bring uh, uh, autonomous cars to the city sometime in the next 10 to 15 years. Um, I think that, um, yeah, we're just going to keep growing. Look, something unique I think about me, it's different than other entrepreneurs. My main goal is to be in the public section. Um, I, I want to be in politics in the end of the days. So when I'm 70, I will probably be a minister, I hope so, and uh, in the Israeli government. And this is what I would say to my kid, that if you want to do something big, if you want to change lives, if you want to be, um, um, I don't know, someone that can help people, that can move our society to a better place, you have to f first, you have to build some stuff. You have to try to be a better businessman, you have to be a better uh, social guy, you have to try to build stuff, to be an entrepreneur. Well, I'm still pretty young, but uh, I would hope that I can tell them that, I'm, that I've uh, used my life not just to benefit myself, but to benefit others, that I've uh, created something and built something from the ground up, uh, and that's something I'm experiencing already now, and that I've learned something meaningful from doing all of that.
That's all. Now, wait a minute, because we want to introduce to you a Jerusalem spirit called Firgun. Two years ago, before I was uh, involved in this and before I had my business, uh, some of the founders of Made in Jerusalem started Firgun Day. And the idea was to, uh, to improve and, 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 and emphasize the, the Firgun, the giving pe person a, self, a selfless compliment, uh, that, that kind of uh, 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 the environment that, that was in Jerusalem that included that so much. And, uh, and over time, it's only grown, and that's one of the greatest things about Jerusalem's community. Uh, the, 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 while there's competition, everyone is still trying to help everyone, and everyone has the best, uh, the best of the city's interests uh, at heart. And that really makes just for an amazing experience of living here and running a business here and, uh, and prospering here. Piergon, a vicarious joy for someone else's accomplishments. In Jerusalem's startup ecosystem, Fergan describes the generosity of spirit, an unselfish, empathetic joy that something good has happened, or might happen, to another person. There's no single explanation for this secret sauce, but like a beautiful flower, each and every entrepreneur in Jerusalem is never jealous of the flower next to them. They just bloom. It's like Zuckerberg says, uh, move fast and break things. Can you, can you move and break things? Please. Can you like move and break things? That's fine. In, in T-Line, this is what we are doing every day.